going to talk about Google-like proteins. So basically, these are a transcription factor present in mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, the important things about this cofactor that these cofactors are only found in actinomycetes. So actinomycetes actually uh, is an important kind of bacteria. Uh, this is containing a medically important pathogen, such as cornibacterium, and, and uh, such as mycobacterium. And also there is a streptomyces, which is in actinomycetes as well, which is provide us in one third of the known antibiotics in the world. The key important things is how mycobacterium tuberculosis being survived in granuloma for decades under the presence of nitric oxide, which is the major weapon of the macrophage. It's also the starvation, the uh, low level of oxygen, and also in the presence of high toxicity of the, uh, uh, of the this structure. Uh, this kind of structure, this is belong to IV1. This is the first structure, which is solved by me. Uh, so this protein discovered since 2017, up to date, this is the first structure which is solved by me. I'm not going to talk about this structure and how I solved it, but this structure actually, uh, when it's solved by us, we publish it in Nature uh, uh, Journal. So basically, here's the structure of all like proteins. The most important things, so the C terminal uh, is the red, and the N terminal is the, uh, 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 is the in blue color. The most important thing is that this protein in internal domain has a cofactor, and this cofactor consists from iron and sulfur, and forming this cubic structure, which has changed the structure of a protein. Well, the C-terminal domain is responsible for binding with the DNA, so this is kind of a transcription machinery. Once the protein loses the cluster, this is can change the protein structure and will change the function as well. These proteins are quite small in size. They are no more than 140 amino acids. And in the internal domain, they contain four cysteine residues. These cysteine residues are essential and required for encoding the cluster, which is the cofactor of the protein. So any, any mutation in the cysteine residues will lose the ability of the protein to form this cofactor. This kind of cofactor is quite sensitive to nitric oxide. So once it's reacted with the nitric oxide, we assume in macrophage there is a nitric oxide because this is a major weapon of macrophage. So once the nitric oxide binds with the nitric with, a, with a, this cofactor, it's changed the structure and it's changed the function of the protein and eventually it's changed the transcription as well. So this is will switch quite a lot of other genes. However, this cluster is also kind of breaking down in aerobic condition. So purification of this protein, isolation of it, it's quite difficult because it's done under uh, anaerobic conditions. So basically, here's a part of my work, which is about 10% actually, which I'm going to talk today. And I'm focusing about the interaction between this protein and our RNA polymerase. So basically, here's the YB1. I've, I've started by cloning the YB1 using the PET system factor. So I've cloned the protein with an N-terminal histag to purify. The protein is quite suppressed well uh, in the soluble fraction, and it's also isolated very well using nickel charge column. Uh, now, when we isolate the protein, the protein was containing a, a, a cluster, and we can distinguish that by the color of the protein, because the color of the protein will be red due to the presence of iron. And also the UV visible spec here, showing also a very clear feature at 420, which is a distinct feature of the protein that containing these cofactors. Uh, mass spectrometry, as well as the measurement of iron, was also confirmed the presence of the, this cofactor inside this protein. We know exactly that this protein containing 4FE4S cluster. The next thing is by treating the protein with the oxygen saturated buffer and see whether the this kind of protein can be sensitive to oxygen or not. And we can see that the UV visible spec actually, so this is down in the first figures, and the UV visible spec within the time, within five hours, the decrease in the absorption at 420 means that the protein start to lose the cluster under aerobic condition. And this is why this is quite difficult. Because if we want to keep the cluster inside the protein, we have to do all the experiment under, under uh, anaerobic conditions. So the next step is to see whether it's reacting with the nitric oxide or not. Nitric oxide is the major weapon of uh, present in macrophage and can modulate the transcription. So in the high level of nitric oxide, nitric oxide can kill the bacteria. 
But due to the immunosuppression, sometimes the macrophage produce little amount of nitric oxide. Producing little amount of nitric oxide allow the acid light to redirect itself and also transcript itself and switching from the active state to dormant state and being alive for decades without any uh, kind of growth or multiplication. So basically, once treated the protein with the nitric oxide, we can see that the spectrum will change, and this is a distinct feature. So basically.